guys and welcome back to the channel. This this video today, it's been filmed a little backwards. As you can see, I am absolutely soaked from my run. And most of this video is going to be filmed in the house, uh, kind of A-roll, just me talking to the camera, explaining some things. And then I went for a run and I've got some B-roll that I'm going to put in there. But what is this video about? Today's video is about, it's about gaining weight when you run or when you start running or training for a marathon especially when you taper for a marathon. So a lot of people think that you're gonna lose weight when you run. And that's probably the case for the most part, but occasionally you will gain weight. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you why. My name's Matt and on this channel, I mainly talk about running with a sprinkling of other stuff. If you like this kind of content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming content. Oh, and you can check out the library of past episodes. Um, hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Okay, let's get right into it. Gaining weight through running or training for a marathon or tapering for a marathon. Gaining weight when running, that's the nugget. Okay, let's go. Happy, happy day. I'm sure you've heard people say that they've lost weight through running and you may be one of them. Okay, this is a little early call for comments, but um, it's also going to be the question of the day. But if you've lost weight through running, go ahead and write in the comments below. Yes, running is one of the best bang for your buck activities that you can do to lose weight. You may have heard that running a mile burns around 100 calories, and for easy math, that's probably close enough. But the range is probably around 80 to 120 calories, and that's quite a difference. So why is there such a difference? Well, if you weigh more, you're going to burn more calories because your body's putting in more work to move your body forward. As you lose weight, you may burn less calories. Also, after you've been running for a while, and I mean time, so after several years of being a runner, you may burn less calories or fewer calories because you're becoming more efficient. It's not as bad as it sounds. Running is still an excellent activity to burn calories. And what are calories? Well, they're nothing but a measure of energy. We use energy all the time, even when we're sleeping, when we're sitting on the couch, we're using energy all the time. So, how much energy do you use throughout the day if you were to just sit on the couch doing nothing? That number is your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, and there are plenty of calculators online that will give you your BMR to give you a baseline. I'll put a link to this BMR calculator in the comments below, but I just put my details in and my BMR is 1962, 1,962 calories. Okay, so most of you watching this video, you run. If you don't run already, maybe you wanna start running. You probably use or will use some kind of device to track those runs, just like this. It's a GPS, it doesn't just measure your runs, but it measures all the effort you put into it. Your heart rate, uh, you probably put in your weight and your height, so the watch can give you an estimation of calories burned. Here's a word of caution. Be careful taking to the bank what this device gives you as your calories burn. Okay, in 2017, uh, a study at Stanford University measured a whole bunch of devices and they found that the best device was off by 27%. The worst device was off by 93%. Wow, that is, that's a huge discrepancy in reality and the data given by our watches. Now, a couple of years have passed uh, we've all had updates to our watches. Some of you have newer watches than 2017. So perhaps, perhaps your watch gives a more realistic picture of calories burned. But even if there's a huge improvement from 2017 when that study was done, it's still not ideal. It's very unlikely your watch is going to give you the precise amount of calories that you're burning. So with that in mind, just take it with a pinch of salt. I'll link to the study in the show notes below. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the channel week after week. If you're getting any value from today's video so far, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. All right, on with the video.
Okay, I had to come inside for this next part because I ran 10 miles this morning and I just want to give you an example of how the calorie counts may differ. So we can see here that this morning I ran 10 miles right here, took me an hour and 22 minutes, 56 seconds. Here it is, calories. 1,203 calories I allegedly burnt in the hour and 22 minutes that I spent moving. That's calculated by my watch. Now, if we move over to this runner's world calorie calculator tool, we can see if we put in the details, 10 miles, hour 22.56, my weight 185 pounds, and we calculate, wow, look right here. It says that I burnt 1,399 calories on my 10 mile run. That's 140 calories per mile. So that's about a 15% difference between my watch and what this online calculator says. And I'm pretty sure that I burnt less than that. Okay, no one's the same. No one is the same. So it's impossible for me to give you a number of calories that you should be burning. It really doesn't matter because we're all individual. Uh, we're all on N of one in this experiment of life and running. So what I want you to do is just be aware. Just be aware of how much you're running and how much energy you're taking in, food, how much you're eating. There was a study of elite distance runners and the study showed that there was a calorie difference expenditure. So between the, the lowest calorie burning and the highest calorie burning individual, there was a calorie spread of 700 calories. That's huge. But is it really huge? No, it doesn't matter because everyone's different. And even if you're an elite runner, some of them are gonna burn fewer calories on a run and some of them are going to burn more. You and I are just like those elite distance runners. It all comes down to individual traits. Well, we're like them in the way that we burn calories when we run. We're not like them in the way that we can run at these crazy speeds. But all right, listen, that's a topic for another time. We all have different individual traits like body mass, respiration rates, and how much of the different types of muscle we have. Fast twitch, slow twitch, you know the drill. All that contributes to the amount of calories that you'll burn when you're running and the amount of calories that you need throughout the day. With that said, I don't want you to worry too much about your own individual traits. It's just a matter of paying attention to your activity level and what you're eating. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, so take everything I'm saying here with a little pinch of salt, but, if you're looking to lose weight, you might wanna pay a little closer attention because you need to burn about 3,500 calories to lose a pound. A pound of weight or fat, I don't know. Write in the comments if you know. But about 3,500 calories will lose you a pound. So if you try and lose, if you try and eat a deficit of three to 500 calories a day, that's gonna give you a safe amount of weight to lose. Whatever you do, just don't become fixated on the numbers. That can really sap the enjoyment out of running, out of eating, out of life. Don't become fixated on the numbers. Just be aware of it and you'll be good to go. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's get on to the main question. Why does running not always equate to weight loss? It's really a great question. New runners often expect the weight to just fall off when they start running. And it's probably, it's probably realistic to think that that will happen because all of a sudden they're expending a lot more energy than they usually do. Why wouldn't this extra activity result in weight loss? Well, for starters, when somebody starts to run or they really pick up their training and they start training for a marathon, they start to build muscle. Now, I know a pound of muscle and a pound of fat weighs the same. Muscle is a high density material. Fat is a low density material. What that really means is, is that a pound of muscle takes up less space than a pound of fat. It's why your clothes will start to fit you better, even though the number on the scale hasn't gone down at all. This is a great thing. The number on the scale is just the number on the scale. It doesn't mean anything past that. If your clothes are fitting better and you've got more energy and you're able to do more, that is what it's all about. The scale, the scale is one dimensional. It isn't the whole picture. Don't focus too much on it. So guys, I was editing this video and it turns out 
that it's over 20 minutes long. And I really think 20 minutes is much too long for a YouTube video, especially on running or gaining weight when you run. So, so I have separated it into two parts. You have just watched part one. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe. Like if you did, subscribe anyway, because it will get better. And tune in next week for part two, where I finish the video. I've already made the video. I've just separated it into two parts. So uh, I'm separating it into more bite-sized pieces. Okay, as always, be kind, be happy, run well, and I'll see you next week. You can hold me when I hold you. Goodbye, gray sky.